Let's talk a little bit about how you got into this industry. You started off um, as a swinger, right? Yes. Well, you know, it's interesting because those two things kind of collided at the same time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're talking circa 2008, 2009, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things that I discovered it at a very, very early age, seven years old. Wow. Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, it was my father's stash that I kind of, you know, me and uh, my brother and sister somehow got into my parents' bedroom. And I knew my, my father had the, the freak DNA in him, mm -hmm. even at that age. I knew he was into all kinds of different things. Yeah. So we somehow got into my, our parents' bedroom and we went on this, this mission to just find whatever we could. And my brother went left, my sister went right, I went straight under the bed, there's the, the shoebox, pull out the shoebox, uncover it, and there it was. Yeah. And ever since then, I had this fixation. So, you know, we fast forward up until around 2008, 2009, I was working uh, just a regular nine to five down in uh, Miami. And, you know, I was always kind of like, you know, if the right situation ever presented itself i would do it because mm -hmm. you know at that time i was like i had something in me i think like most guys have it in them you know man i i, I know i could do that now you know just give me the, the the right you know situation maybe i could put a mask on hide my identity you know what mm -hmm. i mean so i'm um, working at my regular job and i'm listening to um satellite radio and it was the um howard stern show and he's just talking to this guy and they're talking about this contest they're having uh, for a well-endowed guy with personality, the guy they used to have who turned out it was Shane Diesel. And um, they were looking for the new Blackzilla, it was mm -hmm. who the character was. Mm -hmm. I wasn't familiar with any of it. Um, but they were like, look, if you feel like you got what it takes, um, you know, take a some pictures of your junk, send it in. And I'm sitting there just doing data entry and I'm like, this is the shot. This is what I've been waiting on. This has got to be it. So I went into the bathroom and chubbed up and took a few shots and hoped, well, you know, we'll see. Yeah. They called me the next day and he said, you're the guy. Yeah, I bet they did. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they called you the next day. I'm not surprised at all. He said, you're the, I was like, are you sure? He said, no, you are the guy. We've been looking at dicks all day <laughs> and you're the one. So I was like, oh my God. So at the time I said, well, now I'm a little nervous. You know, of course I wanted it, but now the opportunity's there. And I'm like, well, what, what's this going to consist of? Mm -hmm. Well, we want to fly you out to LA, see how you do, uh, you know, um, in front of the camera and then um, if you do well, then we're going to uh, go back on the Howard Stern show and we're going to, you know, anoint you as the new guy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I was like, I'm down with the fly out to L.A. part, but I still wanted to stay anonymous. You know, yeah. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. That leap. So I said, you know what? I appreciate it, but um, I have to turn it down. Mm -hmm. He said, you sure? I said, yeah. So he would check in. Uh, maybe this went on for about two weeks. And I wasn't breaking because I was like, there's no way, man. I'm not ready for that yet. So then he called me up and he said, look, forget about the, the whole show thing. Let's just fly you out and see how you do. Mm -hmm. So I said, OK. And I thought it was just going <laughs> to, just thinking about it. I thought it was just going to be a, um, like a tryout kind of thing. I didn't know I was walking onto a set with like all these people and everything. I was like, all these cars are here for, for me. He's like, yeah, man, we're getting ready to do this. And I was like, oh, my God. So when you say you thought it was a tryout, like how many, like what exactly were you envisioning? I was envisioning a girl and 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 a guy and me, and uh, like a you know just a regular setting, um, and let's see how you do kind okay. of thing. Like a casting couch thing. Almost. Right. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I didn't know I was walking into the fire. Yeah. So that being said, I did it, and um, it was a struggle, man. I, yeah, <laughs> it was I mean. A struggle. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about that first experience because what you guys have to do is so incredibly difficult and I think yeah. a lot of men don't realize it until right. they're in that situation. Right. I could I could relate because um in my mind again it was all coming together at the same time the whole lifestyle thing 
And of course, with the lifestyle, a lot of the, you know, the uh, boyfriends or the husbands, they want to capture it. Oh, it's just for our own personal use, mm -hmm. you know. But so, you know, they're taking pictures and doing video. And in my mind, I was figuring, well, I've kind of got that part down. Mm -hmm. Like I can do my thing with somebody else in the room, mm -hmm. or so I thought. But once I got on that set, and there were multiple people, and the lights were bright, and the girls were, they were impatient, and I'm struggling, and I'm like, oh God, maybe this isn't for me, you know yeah. what I mean? So I just barely got through that weekend. I remember it was a weekend, and we shot, I think, three scenes, and I struggled in each one. And um, I said, you know, maybe, this isn't for me, you mm -hmm. know? It's not it is what I thought it was gonna be. It's a little too difficult. There was no shame in it. Um, I was just like, nah, this ain't it. So um, that's how I got in, and that's also how I walked away from it. Mm 